All right. So today we'll talk about the VoIP uh, systems, VoIP telephone systems, and VoIP stands over stands for Voice over e Internet Protocol. I'm not awake enough yet. Uh, give me a couple minutes, I'll be fine. All right. So, um, but before we do that, uh, I'm just going to call up uh, last couple of slides. Uh, uh, because we didn't finish that uh, presentation yesterday. All right, so this was, uh, we were talking about the JACs, RJ, remember RJ, RJ stands for registered JAC, and uh, that was the RJ, we talked about the RJ11 and RJ12, and the only difference between these two uh, is that uh, RJ11, see here, RJ11 utilizes one, two, three, four prongs, and the other two slots are empty. So how many pairs can we uh, transfer through that uh, or convey through this jack? Here's pair number one, here's pair number two. Okay, remember USOC, uh, Universal Service Ordering Code, that has to do with the wiring. We just count the pairs outwards. So the pair number one, or if there's the only telephone line that this jack is going to convey would be on these two middle prongs okay so there would be pair number one pair number two now when it comes to let me just find that when it comes to rj12 uh well it's the same size of the jack except one pair number one pair number two and pair number three all right so that these are the differences between RJ11 and RJ12. And this will be, we're talking about just a regular telephone cord. Also, excuse me, uh, we talked about the RJ22, which is the smaller jack. It's a different uh, different size, size uh, physically different, well, similar shape, but different size, smaller. That's the one uh, that, uh, that you can find on the handset cord, okay? And of course, RJ45, the good old or the good new uh, RJ45, then that's the Ethernet uh, jack. It is wider. Okay. Now, uh, the well, jack, um, these would be the plugs. The RJ45 jack is able to accommodate RJ11 or RJ12 uh, plug. All right. Uh, so uh, now we uh, this will be the second last slide from yesterday's presentation remember the 25 pair color code uh, so on that rj21 x x stands for male or female um <clears throat> pairs like for example this is an example for the north star 616 um just as an example uh, and this will be the pinout of the 25 pairs. So pair number one, remember this is a white and blue pair. Uh, this is be white orange, white green, white brown, and so on. Uh, so pair number one is connected, to, if you want to connect extension number one, or the first extension. Remember 616 is able to accommodate six incoming parts lines, and it's able to branch out into 16 extensions or 16 telephone sets, which would be the proprietary telephone sets, right? This is just an example. Uh, other telephone systems by uh, different companies, different brands, uh, uh, different models. Uh, yes, uh, they will be, well, sort of different in a way that uh, the programming would be different, the uh, whatever else could be different, but, um, well, you do you program it through the phones, you program it through the laptop, through laptop or whatnot. But you will be looking for a pinout uh, for the um, for the twenty five pair um, fan outs, uh, fan out outlets from those phones, um, and so you'll be looking at something like this. Where do I connect the telephones? Right. So pair number one, extension number one, and it just so happens that the 616 
uh, by default, the numbers are like this. Extension number one would be uh, the telephone number one with extension 21. So you would dial 21 to, to make that ring. And then I'm talking about the internal intercom calls from those telephones. And uh, extension 22 uh, would be the second station and so on, up to 16 stations, right? Notice that, uh, well, if it was three by eight, you would only get from here to here okay and this would be empty space there, not used and of course what do we have here the last pair would be the music on hold so that that's where you would connect the audio source so this would be an input uh now here's a uh, auxiliary ringer contacts all right so here's the relay that would uh, enable the auxiliary ringer that we talked about uh, as an example for like supervisor's office in a large production plant or any kind of noisy environment or for whatever reason you want to connect auxiliary ringer so this would this is where you would connect that and usually this uh this pair here uh, <clears throat> it's a dry contact relay and it would it's a programmable output uh, a dry contact relay output and you could uh, associate that uh, with let's say make that thing close if extension number 33 rings something like that okay that could be done through the programming of the system uh then uh, on top of that we have uh, pair number three and this will be the uh, external paging contacts closure we remember um uh, when uh, when we need to do a page uh well page would be like an all call announcement or any kind of announcement zone announcement or whatnot uh this is where the audio would come out so this is an output it's just an audio output but remember we talked about the, the um, if the input was active all the time on the amplifier you would hear the noise through the speakers so the input of the amp the commercial paging amplifier uh the input is disabled until this other input the enabling input on the amplifier is well closed so here it would be the another it would be another relay that would close that enable that input uh, on the amplifier and uh, and then the audio would come through the page is done the relay opens uh, then uh, then the uh, amplifier is uh, well going to be quiet. Right. You won't hear that uh, annoying hissing noise coming through the speakers. All right, so how do we connect? Uh, for the most part, uh, well, this could be any system, uh, but I just uh, decided that I'm going to show you the Nortel, uh, Nor by Norton Telecom. And remember, I said, uh, yes, this company is out of business for a long time, but still, for some reason, well, for some reason, it's because these phone systems were so good, uh, then for some reason you can still buy the brand new uh, systems. And who produces that where? Well, not too many of us care, uh, but truth is that's, uh, that it's still, you can still buy brand new systems. Uh, not used ones, not refurbished ones. Uh, yeah, you can buy refurbished ones as well, but uh, you can still buy new systems. Okay, so here would be the RG21X uh, output, and that would go into the uh, Bix field, and it the, it terminates just like the one uh, the cable 25 pair cable that we have terminated. Also, you can uh, you can have those sockets that are associated with the uh, with the Bix frames. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You see here. Um, you don't see them much, but uh, it, it it could be available. So normally you would just get that uh, 25 pair cable, terminate using a butterfly tool, you would terminate one end, or you could buy a pre-done cable as well, um, but you would just go on RG21. And uh, then uh, from there, uh, you could terminate right onto the frame, or if you, um, if you buy uh, the, well, you could just, by the pre-done cables. So you would have two RG21 uh, ends on it. You would just take it from here and plug it into this socket. 
and that would be associated with this. So there's not too much uh, uh, terminating that you have to do. Well, you can skin the cat in more than one way. Is that the thing to say? I know I would want somebody want to skin a cat, but somehow that thing is. Uh, so there's more than one way of doing uh, doing things here, right? So you can do it this way, or you can do it that way, just so you know that the options exist. Um, or if you're going to uh, do, um, you know, you're going to encounter some sort of service call. If you see something like that, then you know what that is. Are you going to get many new installations like this? Well, possibly, but it's going to become less and less because everything is going towards the VoIP telephone systems. However, as I mentioned before, uh, where the business is right now, and it's still going strong, is uh, in converting a lot of companies this is the time that the companies are still converting from using the old conventional telephone system into voip so then you have when you go in and you're going to well brand new installation you're just going to install the voip but uh, if you're going to do a switch over from the old system to the new system you need to know what you're actually looking at what you're looking for and what you're going to disconnect or maybe do some little uh, changes because sometimes people go hybrid as well so uh, uh, and okay here would be the incoming CO lines into that 616 some of the other the bigger modular systems they don't have those RJ inputs or RJ12 inputs or RJ11 inputs so you plug in the telephone cord uh, from whatever the line is coming out uh, they have those lines brought out in one of those 25 pairs as well so uh, there will be a different socket to plug the 25 pair cable in uh, but we were talking about the modular systems the bigger systems that you can expand and expand and expand so they are not like those lines are not plugged in like this the lines will plug cross uh, cross connected into the big uh, locations all right uh, okay now from there things could be cross-connected into, let's say, voicemail. There could be a, a physical box that uh, that is called a voicemail. So there'll be the internal voicemail. From there, you can connect the telephone stations, right? telephone station one. And with this one, you can, uh, you know, you can do 16 of those, right? Um, Aside from connecting telephones, you can connect the ATA adapter. An ATA adapter, when you plug that into the phone system, the phone system thinks it has a phone plugged in, all right? So the signal will be just the same. And uh, the ATA adapter would convert the uh, system signal, the, 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 the shape or the form of the signal that is understood only by these phones and that system. That's that's the language they're talking. And uh, if you plug in, just a regular single line set uh, into that uh, phone system, it will not work, right? So you need to have something to translate the signal. So ATA adapter into analog telephone adapter uh, and different companies, depending on the equipment, they would have different ATA adapters that would understand this part of the signal. However, the output of it, it's always going to be the pods. Uh, output right and uh, from there you can connect the door stations uh, um, like for one of the examples would be uh, truck driver or truck uh, truck gates right the transportation so we some some of the companies have the uh, gates for the trucks to enter uh, so they need to well just before they are let in they need to uh, call someone letting them know and uh, asking them you know where to where to go and where to uh, where to park and things like that so that door station would be just basically on the side uh, as they pull in uh, it would be raised so they don't have to get out of the truck they would just roll down the window and press this button and this would be programmed as a hotline so uh, this here and this here is pretty much the same thing, almost, but this one has a keypad and a handset. This one doesn't have a keypad and doesn't have a handset, but here's a speaker and a microphone there. And it has a button to press because then if you connect the door station, then you would program this as a hotline um, 
uh, so this uh, pressing the button, it would be just equivalent to picking up the handset and dialing the number. So it would be programmed as a hotline. And hotline is, you pick it up. Once you pick it up, the handset, then the uh, the dialing happens right away automatically. Right? Then there's auxiliary ringer also can be connected to appropriate input and so on. Also, uh, through another ATA, you can connect the paging interface. So paging interface understands pods signals. So if you can dial that extension number of this ATA, because remember, when the ATA is plugged in, this phone system thinks it's a phone, right? Uh, so it also is going to assign an extension number to the uh, so you to the ATA. So you would dial the ex the extension number of the ATA, and the ATA can be programmed to once pick one once you pick up, then it's going to present a ring tone or ring signal on its output. Same as here, you can use the telephone here. You can call that extension is going to make that telephone ring and if you call that and this thing is connected this this ata and it's connected to the paging interface pods input then the paging interface can be programmed to react certain way and it's uh usually it's going to give you a pre-announced tone uh which means you can speak right away and it's going to your voice is going to be heard over the speakers through the amplifier or it is going to depending on the programming it might uh the the pre-announced tone, pre-announced CEs, pre-announcing tone, is going to uh, mean that uh, you have to enter the number of zone, uh, the zone number that you want to page or a combination of. So uh, this can, this is programmable, right? And of course, over here we have something that's called single line telephone, single line set, which is POTS, uh, and it's uh, labeled as a 911 phone. And if you notice. That, uh, li that, th that line is not going through the phone system, it's not going through anything else. It is going straight to that phone. And um, as we mentioned, uh, only one telephone per line should be installed. So um, if somebody does somewhere on the other side of the building, if they don't hang up the phone properly, and if this, Two, these two phones are daisy chained on the same telephone line, then you would not be able to use that phone because the line would be just taken out of commission, right? So that's the reason for that. And uh, well, just as a recall from yesterday, uh, these CO lines, like say six lines, they could be um, ordered from the telephone company, telephone provider, and they you don't program them to be in the rollover sequence they are ordered from the company as rollover. So here's a line one, we need like six lines, okay. And can you make them a rollover sequence? So the rollover sequence is, is programmed by the telephone company and those lines are given to you, presented to you as such. Now, if it comes to selecting the lines, if you want to dial outside, those can be grouped uh, internally in the phone system. Uh, so these lines one, two, and three, there could be for the accounting department. And lines uh, da, 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 da. So then you could probably order those in rollover sequence, and then you would order those in rollover, separate rollover sequence, okay? Or you can just get all of them in a rollover and just, uh, presented to the company. So things are fully programmable, um, adjustable, right? Now, is that the last day? Yeah, that was the last slide from yesterday. So I'm just going to um, switch screens. And now we're going to get into something that's called a VoIP. I remember we said VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. So these are the internet phones. Well, uh, there are a couple, well, there's not one set way of uh, installing uh, things. Um, you can get a complete brand new VoIP system, or you can do something that's called a hybrid system. I'm going to start a little bit I'm going to go ahead of myself a little bit, but I think it's going to be more beneficial for you. I'm going to go back to that slide here. All right. These, 
you could have a situation that this whole system is set up, the wiring is there, people are used to using their phones and they can call each other on that end. And they said, well, yeah, but they want to save some money on uh, instead of purchasing the telephone lines, the CO lines, the pods lines, they don't want them anymore because the price between uh, the difference in price um, between the one CO line and one something that's called the SIP line, Session Initiation Protocol, that's the internet line, it's about three, uh, one to three or three to one, okay? Uh, so uh, it would cost three times more to pay for a physical line than ordering one SIP line. So something can be done uh, as, as far as a hybrid. You can get the ATA adapters or ATA module from whatever the company is providing the VoIP service. And that box would be connected to the network through to, 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 to the local area network. And from there, that ATA adapter, it could be with multi lines or it could be, you could get one, two, three, four, six of those. And they could be plugged into the, um, to the network. And on the other side, they would present a CO line. And then the rest of the system could work fine. So you could have, you could get rid of the POTS lines except for that one that stays uh, then uh, but if there's a you know if the company has 100 telephone lines then uh, just multiply the price to order 100 it was 100 dollars right now per line uh, or a little bit over 100 dollars for to order a line for business uh, then uh, if you get 100 lines costs add up and so do the savings the savings add up right so <clears throat> so you could have it that way and you would still have the VoIP service but it's still using the infrastructure of the old system that you have that can be done yes but for the most part you're going to get brand new phones um, and we're going to look at a couple of possibilities or, or, or on, on how things are being installed and configured all right <clears throat> all right VoIP voice over internet protocol. All right, what's the objective of the game here? The concept, it's a private branch exchange. Branch exchange. So private branch exchange is a telephone system installed locally as a system that serves a closed facility. All right, usually in a commercial environment such as office building and production plant or so on. What's the purpose of the PBX? So we're just kind of getting back to the uh, uh, you know, to the concept here. To provide locally distributed phones, phone sets to individual clients in a way that the end users can. What can they do? They can call each other internally without the need to select outside lines. Well, that could work for VoIP, that could work for conventional system. Perform audio paging. Yeah, that could work for both VoIP or conventional. That's the whole concept. You still want to use the phone and talk on it and use all the feature. Use telephone sets to communicate with outside worlds so worth making you know, outside calls. Receive calls from outside. And those outside calls would be directed by the reception operator or automated routing system. You know, quite often, well, that's you know, so you call the company and the human answers. Can I help you? And they would transfer the call or whatever. Or you could hear an, um, a, a robot saying, "Hello, you have reached press one for this press." You know, and they always start with the store hours, and you have to listen to all the options because they apparently have changed. <laughs> all right, before you can say, "Yeah, I, I want to talk to a human," and then uh, that's that's the last option to select. But sometimes that's the way it is. All right, uh, excuse me. <coughs> Uh, the users can use the designated voicemail yeah, that can work for both uh, VoIP or conventional. They can transfer calls to each to other users. Hmm. Well, let me transfer you. You want to, You don't want to talk to me. You want to talk to Peter. Okay, let me transfer you to Peter. Right? They can use the conference call, and conference call is basically our Zoom session is a conference call. Right? It's between 
more than two people are, are participating in the call. But it'll be a telephone call like that. Uh, use, use and benefit from other locally enabled features. So here's the concept of PBX. So what's what gives? What's What are the differences? Why am I showing you the two different uh, systems? All right. Let's look at the VoIP versus conventional PBX. That stands for private branch exchange. Or in some cases, you can say KSU, key service unit. But usually key service unit, KSU, is referred to a smaller system and PBX to a well, bigger system. And small would be you know, 16 telephones uh, or maybe even modular system. Um, 20, 25. PBX would be referred as same thing, but maybe it's a big phone system installed in a hospital when you have like, you know, 100 or 1000 telephones, right? All right. So, but PBX and KSU, they basically are the same right? uh, as far as the functionality, right? Now, conventional versus VoIP. All right. So, let's say locally distributed phone sets, yes. They both have it, locally distributed phone sets. Okay. Internal calls within local facility. Okay, well, um, they can also do, VoIP can also do that, but what else can VoIP do? All right, internal calls within local facility. If you want to call the, well, let's say the company has two branches, one on one side of the city and the other side, the other building on the other side of the city. In order to call somebody from the office, from the same company that is in the other building on the other side of the city, you have to select outside line. Or, well, let's say if somebody, uh, if there is a company that has a branch uh, in our city and the other brand, they also have a branch uh, in another city. Or what if they have the branch in another country? Or what if they have a branch in on another continent well then you would still have to if you want to call from one office to another from the two different buildings that are two different continents for example then you would have to select a local outside line and then you're going to have to um, call the number of that facility and then long distance charge long distance charges apply and so on now, here's the difference with VoIP. That's where more money is being saved, aside from just paying less for the telephone lines. And we'll talk about the differences of the telephone lines as well, which is right here. So internal calls within the local facility and other facilities within the common VPN, because you know what? The VoIP lines, which are the SIP lines, that system connects to internet wide area network and it also registers with a um i don't want to use the word proprietary designated vpn so the company can purchase or can have vpn service over the internet and as long as the other building, other building's network is connected to the same VPN, then there is no difference between making the phone call from one office to another in the same building or making the phone call from one office to another if those two offices are on two different continents. So it's just an internal call. No difference if I am dialing somebody who is sitting right beside me or sitting 20,000 miles away. No long distance, no selecting an outside line to call because everything is connected to VPN. So here is, well, if uh, over the year, thousands of phone calls are being made. Well, here is big money saving as well and the convenience as well. All right, so for the conventional PBX, we have conventional CO lines, which will be the POT lines to dial out or to connect to the outside world. And with the VoIP, we don't use the CO lines, we use something that's called a SIP lines. SIP lines are used to communicate with the outside world. What is a SIP line? We'll talk about that in two seconds or maybe a little bit more. Now, uh, 
the other difference is uh, conventional PBX or KSU well, has a locally installed PBX equipment. So there is a physical box somewhere on the floor or somewhere hanging on the wall, mounted on the wall, that is basically considered to be the phone system. It has the hardware in it to basically route the telephone traffic, the phone call traffic. And that's it, right? Now, with the VoIP, you can have that. Yes, you can. Or you can have a hosted routing. Those phones, those VoIP phones, they use the RJ45, the Ethernet cables, and they use the Ethernet protocol. So they connect right to the network just like a computer would, or a PC, or any kind of other smart device, such as uh, wireless access point and whatnot. So it's the same ethernet protocol. So that can be routed to a box on the wall, and it, that box on the wall or in the equipment rack can be the telephone system, telephone system box or you could have a hosted routing where there is no physical box anywhere in the building. Those phones are connecting to the, to the uh, local area network, to the LAN, to a switch, just like any other device, like a computer workstation would. And where does it go? Well, it is programmed to go to a hosting uh, service. So the hosting service, they still have to have some sort of hardware that, 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 that routes the telephone calls. But those phones, locally installed telephone sets, they connect to the network and the network is connected to the VPN and the hosted service provider can be also connected to the same VPN. So that hosted, the, the hosting company can be in another city. It can be on another continent. It just has to be connected to the same VPN. So if there, it works with the bigger companies better this way. Um, instead of purchasing the equipment that has to be serviced, now they just put, they just purchase the hosted service. Of course, programming is done a certain way and the phones are programmed, and the phones are distributed and whatnot. And those phones connect to the VPN. So there is no difference between making the phone call inter, uh, from one cubicle to another or from one continent to another. So, well, well, we will talk about that somewhere. No, we don't have those slides. Yeah. So I'm just going to say that here. Uh, so if you're making an, inter an internal phone call with the hosted service, that phone call gets routed from the telephone set to your network, to your LAN room, or LAN, to the LAN equipment, local area uh, network equipment. That thing is connected to the internet and it's connected through the VPN and the phone call gets routed right to the hosting company from that hosting company goes onto the cloud, which is the internet, logs onto the VPN, and it's being sent to whatever the extension number is. It could be that extension, that phone could be in the office or the cubicle right beside where you're sitting, or it could be on another continent. That phone call gets routed through the hosting company. So if you're talking to somebody next, uh, you know, you, you could be getting uh, routed the phone, the, 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 the the, the phone call can be routed to through like Montreal and then coming back to the same building and talking to this uh, to this uh, uh, well, person sitting next to you. This way, the costs are way less uh, because you're saving a lot of money on purchasing the PO, the COs, uh, central office lines, and no. Um, long distance charges are being uh, are applied. In order for company to switch, they also, they also have to 
pay up front a little bit more money because the equipment is not cheap still. But in the long run, it saves them a lot of money. Okay? All right, the definitions here, PBA Express, and we already talked to that, CO, because well, we talked about that, VPN Virtual Private Network, SIP, Session Initiation Protocol. All right, Session Initiation Protocol. In order for two pieces of equipment to communicate with each other through a network, whether is it um, whether it is a local area network or connect uh, a PC, let's say um, you want to Google something, you want to find out about what kind of giraffes uh, do we have in our local forests, right? Um, so you would uh, click the browser onto Google. So already when you click the browser on Google, then the session is initiated between your computer, through all the wires, through the local area network, through the internet, through some other piece of equipment that has that Google uh, installed on it. It's, it connects somewhere, right? So that's where the Google software lives. So the session is established between your computer and some other server. It could be same city, it could be different uh, you know, town or whatever, wherever the closest Google equipment lives. Um, then the session is established. It's called a session, it's a connection. Okay. So in, uh, with, uh, with the VoIP, the same thing happens. And of course, you, you would find out that there are no giraffes in our forest. So, but you still have to establish session to find that out. Okay, good. So with the, with the telephone, uh, with the VoIP telephones, there are no physical lines per se. Let's say if you have, if you want to get 10 pots lines, you would get 10 physical pairs, conductors, pairs of conductors connected physically on, into your building. If you want to get 10 SIP lines, your building is already connected to internet right so there is no additional hardware or lines or cables that needs to be pulled in to you to you just purchase more bandwidth on the internet so the zip line occupies a certain type of bandwidth i remember is the um uh, we were talking about the broadband uh, community uh broadband uh, multiplexing so here Broadband has bandwidth. So you purchase certain type of bandwidth to accommodate the frequency span that is enough to carry your human voice. And our human hearing range is uh, between anywhere between 20 hertz and uh, 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. But we don't use all that in order to communicate there are certain there's certain narrow spectrum for us to communicate and still being able to understand each other maybe you're not going to hear the mm, uh, the tone of somebody's voice because that's where the higher bandwidth comes but you're going to understand what somebody's talking so sometimes uh, you can well less and less often right now because sometimes you would get a good connection you could hear the the color of somebody's voice and you know but sometimes you can just hear a little bit narrowed so um the the the, the voice quality is not that uh, that great but you can still understand so that means that the zip line has a little bit less bandwidth it's maybe it's cheaper zip line uh, different companies solve it different way it's, it's all about shaving a buck all right uh so <clears throat> so the zip line is not a physical piece of wire it is a part of the internet bandwidth so let's say you talk to your telephone or the internet provider which kind of synchronizes with the VoIP provider and whatnot and uh, you say oh, okay can we purchase 25 zip lines all right 
And what, you know what they do? They just click something on the keyboard and there you go. You got, uh, you know, you purchased more bandwidth right now. Mm -hmm. So they are virtual lines, right? Three times less expensive than the physical uh, line here, right? So session initiation protocol, SIP line is a standard protocol for internet-based communication, including telephony, video, messaging, and conferencing. So basically it's a virtual telephone line. SIP, trunking. Trunking is bundling things together. SIP trunking makes it possible to connect PBS to internet, enabling business communications without the use of PRI lines. There is back again. He explains something and then throws something that needs to be explained still. All right. uh, PRI, primary rate interface. Mm. Let me find that slide. I don't see, oh, that would be the, with the pots. That would be with the, it's not on the, on that. Just give me a sec here, guys. Come on. Yeah, give me a second. I'll be right with you. I just really want you to see that slide. Where's the pot spot spots? Telephone conventional 25 pair pots. There it is. There, all right, there it is. It would look like something like this. So this would be the POTS lines terminated here and the cross connected to wherever they go. Or here's the primary rate interface. It would, in, in, it's sort of like a SIP line. It's a bro, uh, broadband multiplexing, right? So instead of having physical lines, let's say, five lines there is a pri service purchased so on two pairs one is transmit one is receive you can have um, multiplexed onto that those five lines using the broadband multiplexing so here all that just to show you that slide so uh trunking on the SIP, on the with the inter or the over the internet, you don't need those PRIs because you are already having that something called SIP line trunking, which is bundling uh, the SIP lines. So you could uh, you could purchase a multiple lines, and that's what basically is involved. It's called SIP line trunking, which is bundling lines together. Right? And you know now what the PRI interface is, PRI. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, next slide here. <laughs> oh, I was looking for that slide and it was right here. Oh, Mr. Bach. All right, primary rate interface. Uh, it's one physical, line. actually, you know, it's a one physical line, but it's two pairs, right? So up to 30 simultaneous, so you can have up to 30 lines. Uh, with the broadband uh, multiplexing. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end digital circuit. So also a big difference between the internet or the SIP lines and the PRI is that that those two pairs, pair interface, there's one interface, there's another. Those two pairs are physically going to telephone provider, transmit and receive. Uh, so it will be the earlier version of the, you know, uh, will be step up from this here, from the CO lines. Uh, so you don't have to use so many wires. Right? 
or pairs. Okay, so one PRI consists uh, of two copper pairs. One is transmitted, one is received. Modem is required. So here will be the modem. Right? And sometimes the modems look different. Uh, remember what modem stands for? Modulation and demodulation. Two words combined together give you the word that's called a modem. And uh, in that PRI, a multiplexing is used to carry multiple channels. And what kind of multiplexing? Broadband, because anything that comes out of the building is in an analog form, which is broadband. And anything comes in from that point on from the modem is in the digital. So it would be the time division multiplexing. All right. So multiplexing is used to carry uh, each PRI channel bandwidth is 64 uh, kilobytes per sorry kilobits per second See that? kilobits um, when we talk about the speed uh, we're talking about bits per second and we were talking about storage we are talking about bytes and there is no per second because it's a storage right well if you really want to be stubborn you can say Oh, it has one terabyte per oh, 30 years, maybe because that's how long it can handle, right? I don't know, but I'm just being cute right now here. So forget what I just said. All right, so each PRI channel bandwidth is, you know, so there are two types of uh, common PRI types. Uh, E1, it can handle 30 channels and it's used in Europe and in India. And there's a T1, so this will be the T1 interfaces because you know if, if you were not in North America here, and it can um, depending on how it's configured, uh, it can carry 23 or 24 channels, right? So the one that is in Europe and in India, it's a little bit uh, better as far as the volume, but uh, maybe uh, the channels are maybe kind of have less bandwidth each. Uh, so there's a give and take. Right? All right, Host, hosted versus local. We talked about that, I explained that uh, to you here, physical hardware for local PBX, there's a physical hardware involved. Hosted, there is just the phones connected to the network just like any other computer. So no additional. Well, as far as additional, yes, you're going to have to purchase additional switches, but the switch can accommodate a computer or it accommodate phones. So uh, uh, so there's no additional specialty equipment that needs to be purchased. So local versus hosted routing. Physical hardware placed in the facility at hand, all right? In the local and hosted, no locally installed PBX. Local. All telephone connections home run to the cross connect points distributed around the facility or all the telephone sets connect to the computer network, then interfaced with the local PBX. So you can have a VoIP system that uses local PBX, but the phones, they still connect to the switches of the network. And that switch will be connected to that telephone box. And that's where the where all the mm, routing happens for the telephone. The, the traffic direct thing happens for the telephone traffic. All right. Let me just make sure that we're not getting lost ourselves in the woods here. All telephone sets connect to the local uh, connect, connect. All telephone sets connect to the computer network and then interface with the local PBX. Right? So that will be local. All system connections are connected to the PBX directly through the computer network. So these two go together. Internal calls are routed through the local PBX. All outside calls are routed through the CO lines or the SIP lines through which um, the local, through the local install PBX. So there is that box, physical box that's somewhere in the building that connects also to the network and that's the traffic director. For the hosting, no box, 
no locally installed PBX, all telephone sets are connected to the computer network, all calls are routed through the hosting client, not through that box because there's no box anymore. Okay. Connections to the hosting clients are established through VPN. All connections between the end users are treated as internal calls within the same VPN. So this means, which we talked about, that the call between London, Ontario and Hong Kong is treated, if there will be one branch here in London, one in Hong Kong, same company connected to the same VPN, this call between those two offices will be treated as internal call within the same VPN. Okay. Next slide. Connections. Remember we talked about these connections here? Here's a slide. We talked about that. Now, oops. Here is our connection right here. Similar thing, same but different. All the phones home run through ethernet cabling and they connect through the patch panels. The patch panels, well, on one side, they go to the regular outlet phone, uh, the ethernet outlet on the wall or in the floor or whatnot. They're connected. From here, they are patched through the switches switch or a bunch of other switches cascaded together and that is routed to the router or whatever the equipment that connects you with the internet so that's basically all the connections which brings me to the point well what about this there's no physical box with the output audio output to connect through the amplifier but we still want to do paging well here's that magic word or magic acronym ata ata adapter you could have the voip systems they could also have ata adapters so to the network, instead of plugging a phone, you can plug in an ATA adapter. And guess what? The ATA adapter would translate the ethernet signal from whatever the uh, company is, the hosted company or the local PBX into pots. And then it connects the paging interface, connects to amplifiers, connects to speakers, right? So we use the ATA adapters. They are wonderful things. Right, connections, topology, we're almost done. That VoIP has to be connected to the network. So you need additional Ethernet line. Or do you? Or do we? That would be the ideal situation. But because, well, companies that produce those phones they want to sell as many of them as possible and for them to sell as many as possible is to make it as convenient as possible for people to buy so the con this would be inconvenience because you would have to run additional wire ethernet wire to every location where there's a phone but over here you can put that phone in line with already existing installation that's wonderful so you unplug the computer, plug in the phone to the network, and then from the phone, you go to the computer. So there's an input, there's an output for ethernet. You can have a dedicated connection, nothing wrong with that. And you can have an inline connection. The inline connection, if anybody works in some of the larger uh, hardware stores, if you look at the POS, the point of sale locations, you're going to see the cash register, which is basically a PC, uh, and then you're going to see a VoIP phone. And if you look at the connections, that PC, the cash register PC, is plugged into the phone. And the phone is plugged into the network. Yeah. Uh, and this would be how things would be. So uh, this would be the uh, network connection here. And this would be the computer connection. And that's how things. Now, you can, that VoIP phone, you can plug in straight to power 
into the outlet, or you can use something that's called a VoIP, not VoIP, um, POE. POE stands for Power Over Ethernet. So the ATA adapters and the phones, they need power to operate. So remember, things need to be convenient for people to buy them. Well, POE was invented to accommodate just that. Switches, the switch, the ports on the switches, they might have just a signal, Ethernet signal, and that's it. You can also buy a switch that has ports that provide the Ethernet signal, as well as power over Ethernet, which would be a power to supply the power to the whatever device, whether it be a wireless access point, ATA adapter, or VoIP telephone. So there is no need to get adapter and plug it in and plug things in the wall. You just plug in this thing to the thing and it just gets powered. There are some specifications that need to be followed as far as power consumption and power availability and so on. And uh, so when you're doing the retrofitting, you're going to do a bit of a survey and you're going to check if those switches that are existing, um, do they have POE capabilities? And depending on the size of the project, you might recommend that the company switches the switches. So the old go out and the new come in with the POE capabilities. Some of the switches have, have are, are just to save the cost, maybe they're going to first eight ports POE capable and the rest just signal. Okay. Or you can use the POE injectors depending on how many phones and whatnot. So sometimes it's cheaper to just get the whole switch than a bunch of POE injectors and it just create a mess. Right? And remember, see that? Here is the ATA adapter plugged into the network. The network treated as phone, so it will have its own extension number. You can do it. You can plug in a regular telephone, POTS phone, or you can plug in a paging interface, which understands POTS. Paging interface connects to this. So there could be an in, uh, existing installation here. And all you have to do is just uh, switch some things around, maybe different ATA adapter, and it has to be programmed. Yeah. So just the video links, uh, well, during your reading week, you can treat this as your reading materials. Yeah, okay. And this would be the um, the last slide for today. Oh, look, we are two minutes within the time, guys. Uh, please enjoy your reading week and uh, come back in one piece <laughs> when you leave. Right. Uh, all right. I'll see you next. Uh, I mean, I'll see you within uh, uh, well a week from now week and a little bit from now all right all right i will thank you nick and thank you everybody and have a great one and now i have to find the button to uh to press so i can end this session here i always look for there it is it says end okay bye guys